Messi. Oh, what a goal it is! Hello, guys. I'm happy to be here today in this podcast. Um, my name is Bianca Resch. I'm the sporting director of the FC Bayern Women's Football Club. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Bola Bola Show. It's another exciting episode for us today. But before we get into that further, I'd like to bring in my co-host today, Bala. How's it going? Hi, Steven. How are you? Thanks for bringing me inside. It's been a wonderful uh, season. Once again, Malaysia has been uh, MCO again for 3.0. Hopefully, things get better. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, who, who do we have in our, epi- uh, our episode this week? A uh, very interesting character, all the way from Munich. Uh, none other than Bianca, the sporting director of Bayern Munich. Hi, Bianca. Welcome to the Bola Bola Show. Hi, guys. Thank you for inviting me. Okay. So, uh, I mean, what's the situation like in Germany these days? I mean, are you guys still in a lockdown or, I mean, is things have opened up? Uh, you know, what, what, what's it like right now? Um, well, at the moment, it seems um, things are open up again. So, luckily, um, so the numbers are going down, which means we, yeah, I think, uh, like, things are open up more and more. So, hopefully, uh, we make it through fast and go to the summer with, yeah, like, more happiness again. <laughs> mm, okay, yeah, good to hear that. All right, without further ado, okay, Bianca, I've, I'll start the question first. So, uh, can you share to our listeners about your role within Bayern Munich Women's Team? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm the sporting director of the FC Bayern women's team, which means I'm responsible for, let's say, the whole women's football department when it comes to um, yeah, sporting decisions, which means uh, mostly on our first women's team um, when it comes to like transfers, like building the strategy, the sporting strategy, where we want to go, what our goals are. Defining player uh, profiles, uh, what kind of players do we need um, for our team? Um, having exchange with um, with agents all the time, um, and as well having a big focus on our youth teams. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, and of course every fan, football fan, will know about the Bayern Munich's men's team. But when it comes to the women's team, I mean, uh, how much does the women's team get support from the top hierarchy of the club? I mean, how important is it, the women's football department these days in Bayern Munich? Oh, well, it's, it's very important. It was uh, important for a long time. I mean, we're celebrating our 50th, 50 and 1 birthday this year. Oh, so, okay. Uh, the FC Bayern women's football has a huge tradition in history and in, in FC Bayern um, club history. So which means it was always important. But um, I mean, now with women's football getting bigger and bigger, um, like even our club is taking it very serious. Um, and this is why we put it down a strategy the last uh, last two years. So where we want to go. And, and this means um, the club has or will fully support us. Okay. Looking about your goals as a sporting director. So what are the short and long-term goals with Bayern Munich um, women's team? So what are your mm-hmm. vision? And well, yeah, we have, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we have a vision. I mean, uh, short term, it's quite clear. We wanna, we wanna make the next step, which means focusing on our own league, on the German league, which means we wanna be the number one. This is, uh, this is not the case right now. Um, like Wolfsburg is the all time, let's say, uh, leader and champion in the league. Um, mm-hmm. and this is what we're aiming for. Like, just trying to kind of push them away um, and, and make it to, to the to the number one in, in Germany and not even on let's say one time even consistent uh, consistent is our our main main short-term project and in terms of our own league mm-hmm. but in mid and long term definitely uh, you had to be one of the top team in, in Europe and making it to the Champions League final and even win the trophy ones I mean we were very close but uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, we didn't make it to the final, um, mm-hmm. which was a bit of a pity. But um, yeah, I mean, I think we had a good good start this this year, and we we move on quite quite quickly. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, yes, I was following uh, the women's Champions League progress and noticed that Bayern Munich uh, couldn't make it to the final, uh, having knocked out by Chelsea. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, you know, for the past four seasons, Bayern has been finishing second in the Bundesliga table behind Wolfsburg. But this season, you guys have been on a roll. I think only one defeat in 19 games, winning all the other 18 games. So do you feel this team can maintain this momentum until the end of the season and finally, you know, lift that Bundesliga trophy? 
It would be a huge situation. Uh, I mean, I trust my team that we will, would be able to do it. Um, but I, I will be honest as well. I mean, we have a hard game on the weekend. We're playing and facing in, uh, Wolfsburg in Wolfsburg, which is an ah, away game. Ah, okay, okay. Um, you know, after, let's say, the loss against Chelsea, you know, uh, the moods and the power is a little bit uh, lost right now. Mm-hmm. But I think by end of the week, uh, we will get back on track. And uh, I think it will be a tough game. But um, the question is, Are we can make it? Are we going to make to make it? Um, I would wish it is a wish we would do. Um, <laughs> it's a really, really open race. I have to say it can be go either way. I see. Uh, all right. So good luck in your facing the uh, Wolfsburg team. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, by the way, okay. Uh, we have seen men football evolve from four four two to four three three, and uh, with uh, Pep Guardiola bringing Tiki Taka, and now recently <laughs> with the uh, pressing game by the team, even Juventus are following. But in terms of women's game, uh, how how tactically they have evolved compared to the last 10 years, if you may say, or maybe even from your playing care days up to now? How oh, well, I mean, there's a huge oh. difference, not in just in terms of like what kind of tech we choose playing against uh, another team. It, it, it is as well like the physical part of the game got like so much stronger. Players got faster, players got stronger, the game got faster. Um, and even like teams, you know, coaches on, on, on national level, international level got more qualified. So um, it's much more harder to um, to win games. So you have to have good coaches um, who, know, who are knowing the game. You need to have players who are, uh, get better development in, um, in their early years when they uh, develop, you know, different kind of tactics. Um, so they're able to, to play different tactics. Um, But this has happened, um, and you can see it, I think, every day in the game. So, yeah, definitely mm-hmm. something. Okay. Uh, you mentioned in your LinkedIn post that Germany is way behind in the women's football development compared to English <laughs> football. I mean, I mean, I'm a bit surprised because I know for a fact Germany have won the World Cup have, and I've achieved so much on the international stage. But, <laughs> I mean, in what aspect are you saying that Germany is lacking? Um, no, it's, I mean, it's not the, let's say the, the football development itself. It's not the development of players. It's more the development of, let's say, media visibility. Um, mm, okay. How, how is the visibility of our league uh, worldwide, European wide? Um, how is the visibility even in Germany to see our league games, to see the games, to get um, attraction? And this is what we're lacking. And when you like just see the English league, what's going on there, the TV, the media, the TV money they're making uh, for the teams, um, the visibility they have. That's why I have to say we're way behind. Um, and this is frustrating because there's no nothing coming from the DFB. Um, we always hear and we listen to the same words every year. Yeah, yeah, we're doing, we're doing, we, do. we have projects, we have projects. And we get tired of it um, when you see everyone is kind of moving away from you. Mm, okay. Mm, okay. I think Europe, uh, I would say the football, uh, especially in women, is there. At least it's developing or evolving. But uh, what is your aspect of uh, women's football development in the Asia region? I mean, uh, I think women's football everywhere is growing. I mean, Europe is a huge, huge hub with like huge teams, with a lot of big teams. But even in Asia, I think there's a lot of movement going on. And uh, for example, is it, is it China, their Super League? Is it uh, mm-hmm. Japan with their with their new structured league? Um, and even, you know, Olympic, the Olympics game will help, um, will help the, let's say the the next World Cup will help to grow women's football again. Um, and when you compare 2015 and 2019 in France, you know, the spectators, the TV viewers, like it was huge, the difference. And I think there will be another huge step and a huge development when it comes to the next World Cup. And this is, I think every country takes something out of it. Mm, like okay. Even federation, and even federations see Uh, the progress and see the development and they can't say, oh, we're not going to do it. it, it there's no chance. They have to. It's mm. a heavy task. Mm. Mm. Okay, okay. And, uh, you know, now that you're in charge of Bayern Munich, I mean, would you consider one day in the future that you would like to take on a similar role with the German women's national team? And perhaps by being in that role, you probably you can give a little bit more voice or leverage within the DFB for the developments of women's game. 
Well, I think my position, I don't really see it on a, on an international, like, or on a national team. I really like working on a club, working on the foundation, working on like having that every day, daily basis, working with players, with a huge team. I think this is a huge difference when you work for like a federation and even, I always say, you know, sometimes it's very political as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So this is something which it's sometimes even hard to work in that kind of environment. But um, yeah, I like it to be more on the foundation and, and you have the feeling you can move stuff th- or you can move things forward very quickly. Mm-hmm. So, so you're, more, uh, you're more in a similar way like Arsene Wenger who prefers day-to-day club football management rather than, you know, yeah. national team management. Yeah, I think so. Okay, okay. Uh, I mean, I just want to ask, you know, I mean, we know for a fact how uh, in terms of grassroots development, German football has evolved within the men's game since that Euro 2000. And I mean, as sort of similar work as transcend in the women's game as well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the youth development is huge in Germany, even with the young players, with the women players. We have a um, very, very... um, good tradition or very uh, good tradition on young players coming up from the youth uh, national teams like U17, U19, very successful in the past and still are. Um, and we always have like turning out a lot of very young players with, with, with a huge quality. So um, I think in terms of quality and development of youth players, I think Germany is, is on the top. Okay, talking about it, what would you like FIFA or other national bodies to do in terms of giving more support to women game so that at least they be on par with men's game? Of course, salary-wise, I think it's still a long way to go, but at least in terms of the exposure or at least equal level FIFA, well, women, World Cup women and men is equal. Some kind of equality, if I may say. Yeah, I mean, you know, this, this topic, equal pay and equal, I, sometimes I think you have to balance it out a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes I think the conversation are quite tough and quite hard because, mm-hmm. um, you know, you have to know where the money comes from. Um, so for like, for our, like even in our club, it is, you know, the money is coming from the, from the man, from the, as a, I mean, from the main club. So mm-hmm. we don't have a lot of like sponsorship who are like bringing all the money in. So mm-hmm. it's more like a supporting deal from the club. Um, but in terms when it comes to the US, for example, you know, where US, the, the women's football is much bigger and has a much more importance than the men's, you know, then it's a different topping where we speak from. Um, mm-hmm. I think there has to be a difference as well. So definitely we have to, let's say, step up and we have to, let's say, do, make the development a bit better. I mean, I'm, I'm totally with you guys. <laughs> We have to put more money into the women's game. That's for sure. And even on the, let's say, federation level, and there are rules normally to, you know, to share it equal, then we question it should be shared equal. Um, When it comes to, you know, prize money, when it comes to how the players are traveling and stuff like that, this is the task of federations, of the FIFA, of UEFA. And then I think it has to, should be the same. But example, like this event for the recently Chelsea game, right? So, like men, I'm not sure. I think it's common to say whenever the like in Malaysia or even in Singapore, when the when the clubs from Europe they come to other countries, they stay in mm-hmm. a five star hotel or six star hotel. But yeah. uh, how about how about the women football? Are they having a similar treatment or y'all? Uh, yeah, I mean we have very good tweet and, and treatment, and I honestly request myself sometimes if it's really worth to have a stay. Is there really a need for staying in a six or in a five star hotel to mm-hmm. to like? eat and have a good bet you know it's you know sometimes i really i really request it because you know there there's like they're throwing so much money out there for stuff where is it really needed mm-hmm. say no okay. so you know there i think there's a much better way to use that money instead of like if it's now a five or a six star hotel okay okay i understood then <laughs> just to give an example you know yes yes Okay. So budgeting wise is okay still in terms of the uh, budget yeah you know I I eat and sleep in a four star hotel as, yeah. as good as in a five star hotel so I don't care you know <laughs> okay, okay. okay okay but you know the money which they use for a six star hotel difference they could use to to better project projects let's mm-hmm. say like <laughs> okay so so in your point of view that the money has to be made used for for better things that can raise the women's game, you know, rather than other intangible stuff like hotel stays, food and all that. 
which I'm sure that's what they mentioned a four star would do would, would still be fine yeah I mean it's important to have like really high standard you know when you go to a tournament if it's like a four and a half stars or but you know sometimes I think there's like so much more need in different areas that this could be better used mm-hmm. okay okay so I mean what do you think about you know in the post COVID era what would the impact be on women's football Um, I mean, everyone is saying, oh, it's a huge impact and uh, women's football um, will get less attract- attractive, will get less attraction. Um, I think it's it definitely, it, it's a hard, hard position and, and teams are getting, like teams getting, having not enough money and stuff like that. I mean, this is, I think this is a problem everyone had. But honestly, I think it's, it is well a chance for us and for women's football because you know we get like all the, pe- the people get more humbled again like mm-hmm. get a bit back you know step a little bit back and okay what do we really need um and um i think women's football is is something where it gets more attraction and maybe you know because i think money is is used there on a better way you it's a difference not it's a different sport but you know different people different fans has mm-hmm. a different task um, in the society as well. So, and I think this is something where we can get something positive out of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And, and, I mean, in terms of your job, uh, how does the whole pandemic has affected your job? I mean, like you said, you're involved with everything, including scouting mm-hmm. and all that. So, I mean, are you still able to go and travel, you know, say outside of Europe or anywhere to look for talents or you have to do, you have to use a different approach to this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think we get to use to all this kind of different approaches, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I mean, COVID, the pandemic um, hits everyone, even us. Um, like, you can't just go out and, and scout and, and travel uh, through Europe and watching games. And even a lot of games, national teams, use national team didn't even happen. So, I mean, we were lucky that we could have trained and play and do our job, first of all. So, I'm happy and grateful I'm grateful to do work for FC Bayern Munich because, you know, I never had to think about do I get my salary or not mm-hmm. um, in, in, in tough times. And even our club is in tough times. So uh, there's not such money as it was maybe before. So you, you should be very careful for, for how, to you, how do you use the money and what do you really need? What, what, is, um, to, yeah, what do you need to develop? And is there really a need or can it wait? So it's really like, you have to balance it out and before you make decisions. Mm, okay, okay. All right. Any last questions, Wala? Yeah. Uh, this was going through your LinkedIn today morning and uh, you put the incredible idea. So I just, <laughs> want to, I just wondered what is the idea is all about. Then I just, it led me to your Twitter account and then I saw this uh, in Colombia, they started off with the half batch uh, yeah. kind of thing to show that they're you not know, half fan. Basically, they have a man and a woman kind of uh, yeah. the engagement. Yeah. So I think yeah. you are very well kind of having a thought of something direction like that. I think if Bayern really did that, that <laughs> globally everybody would have known. So what do you think? Uh, maybe it might happen in the future? Or yeah, maybe I take that idea. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I take that idea and propose it to my club and Adidas. I'm not so sure. Um, but I mean, when I saw it, I, I was I, I was fascinated. I think it was an incredible idea. Um, and even in such a country where like, you know, women and men are even so kind of different women's yeah. football and it's men's football. And, you know, no one think about women's football, but, yeah. you know, the, the, the South American market is like the, the it's an, it's an amazing market on, on terms of women's football. They're like so much talent. Um, and I think it's to get treated like this, it's amazing. And that like even fans and even the clubs and, and the male football players uh, just take it um, and want to like share it. I think it's amazing. Mm, okay. That's, that's interesting. Okay. Um, any last words from yourself, Bianca? I mean, uh, I mean, what would you, your, your vision or I mean, what was your aspiration about the women's game? Yeah, I think women, the women's game is the women's game is growing, um, and it's uh, sometimes I can't believe how fast it's growing. Sometimes it's it's unbelievable. So when I see the Olympic this year, I see next year the Euros, the year after it's the World Cup. We will have so craziness uh, mm-hmm. of women's football, and uh, the whole world will know it. And um, there's no chance um, to say no to women's football. Um, 
and I think this we will have amazing times before and um, ahead of us. And, and this is something I really look forward to it. Mm-hmm. What yeah. we are able to reach in every term. I absolutely agree with you. I mean, I, I'm a fan of the women's game. You know, I, I've never missed... I can't remember, you know, since 1995, I mean, whenever there's a World Cup show on TV, I always follow yeah. the women's game. So, you know, I, it, to me, that's what I agree with you. These are exciting times for, 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 the, for women's football. And uh, to see there's a lot of voice of uh, wanting to raise the game, including like what you mentioned, you know, equal pay and all that. Mm. I, I can only foresee great things for the women's game. And I, I, I hope maybe you will play a, a bigger role in that as well. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I, I like my role here at Bayern, but uh, yeah, every time when I, I, I can use my voice, I will. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Uh, any last word from yourself? Well, uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I, I'm really excited, uh, happy, to say, um, happy to be here today with you guys. And, and thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk to you. So um, I wish everyone out there yeah, follow the game and um, exciting. Wish with them exciting times wherever they work on women's football. Um, and yeah, all the best. Okay, all right. Any last word, Bala? Uh, just thanks. Of course, uh, after so long delay, finally made it for the Bola Black Show. <laughs> <laughs> really, uh, really enjoyed uh, speaking to you and for your valuable time. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, even for myself, thank you so much. Yep. Thank you very much, guys. Okay, all right. With that said, everyone. We will end this episode of the Bola Bola Show and goodbye.